President, several uh, points have been made about whether or not we should engage with Egypt. Absolutely, we should. But the Egyptian people don't see it as engagement when the engagement is at the end of a truncheon, when the engagement is tear gas bought with American money sprayed on them. They don't quite understand that as engagement. So buying arms, American tanks, and American tear gas to be used for crowd control isn't exactly what the Egyptian people have in mind as far as engagement. With regard to Israel, there is no unified statement from the nation of Israel saying that they're for this. I've had both private and public discussions with the leaders of Israel, and to tell you the truth, Without naming individuals, I can tell you they're not too excited about sending more arms to Egypt. So for someone to come to the floor and say they speak for the nation of Israel, and they speak for all people who love Israel in our country, it's just false. There's probably 20 different groups in our country who support the nation of Israel and support them as our ally. I speak to them all the time. I visit with them daily and weekly in our office. So what I can tell you is, if you talk to the people, to the grassroots, and not to the so-called leadership, you'll find a much different story. Because I would promise you, and I, I would uh, ask and seek to have APAC let me speak to their entire crowd, and we'll, we'll see whether the crowd likes, at an APAC meeting, whether they like sending more weapons to the Muslim Brotherhood or more weapons to Egypt. I think you'll find a resounding no. This amendment's ultimately about the law, and I hope my colleagues will remember that if they vote against their amendment, they're flouting the law, they're voting to disobey the law, they're voting against the rule of law, and they're actually voting against the law they all have voted for.